Robert, hi Louisa, nice to meet you both. Thank you both for taking the time to take a few minutes and have an interview with us. We're super excited about it. Well, thank you, thank you. Likewise, um, it's always a joy. Wonderful church and they have connected with us for many years. Yeah, that's awesome. One of the things, one of the reasons why we wanted to do the interview with y'all is because we see all the updates that you put, um, all the pe one or two people getting saved here, one or two people getting saved there, baptized here, baptized there. So we really wanted to take a moment and connect with you all and with our church family just to know a little bit more about you guys in, in your ministry. So we just wanted to say that all of our church always sees everything that's going on over there. And we love the updates. <laughs> And we talk about it almost on every missions meeting, uh, a new post that you shared about something going on in the ministry over there. So uh, we wanted to choose you guys specifically to kind of dig a little bit deeper for just a few minutes and get to know you all a little bit more on a personal level. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. It's good to meet you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So the first question that we had uh, was we wanted to know uh, how did God lead you into becoming uh, missionaries, and how long have you been on the mission field? We have uh, been missionaries for 26 and a half years in Athens, Greece. When we get saved, I'm Greek, and uh, I get saved in New York. And actually, a world and a church, a first church, was a mission. It was a mission to the Jews. In other words... They did not have an international global vision. It was an aggressive evangelistic mission reaching Jews for Christ in New York City. So for nine years, our world was a mission field to one particular people. Uh, that's the, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. <laughs> so <laughs> I... I we labor, we get saved for nine years, and we were in a Jewish mission. Then later, God led us to go into a, an independent Baptist church in Long Island, and they had a, a global vision, you know, mission work around the world. And actually, the first time we saw missionaries, it was uh, uh, Brent and Sheila Moller, that they are missionaries in South Africa, and we were moved to see slides and to see how God is working around the world. And a little bit after that, I sold my restaurant. I had a restaurant in Queens, New York. And uh, we went to Baptist Bible College. And there God opened our vision for Greece. And uh, uh, I knew in the beginning that God wanted us in full-time ministry. I just did not know where, whether it will be the mission field or starting a church in the U.S., but my pastor, Dr. Gilmings, in Springfield, Missouri, he, he, he was a big missions giving church and had a lot of missionaries. He had visited Greece many times because he was involved with the Bible school and taking Bible students to the Holy Land and also to Greece to do the mission work of the Apostle Paul. And he used to tell me, you don't want to go to Greece. You don't want to reach your own people. And time after time, they were praying for me. And then on my third year, I surrendered my life. I felt the call of God. And uh, I said yes to the Lord. And my wife, likewise, she had surrendered to missions. And God uh, showed us without a question of a doubt that Greece was the place for us to come. There was no other uh, Baptist Bible Fellowship missionaries at that time. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you were part of New York for a while. I was born and raised in upstate New York. And then right. Anya, Anya was born and raised in Stanford, Connecticut, which was right across the border. Across the bay. <laughs> across the bay. And her brother-in-law was born. He in, was raised in the Bronx. He was raised in the Bronx. In the Bronx. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's a... That, like you said, that area in and of itself is a whole nother mission field. <laughs> right, right. And we thought that's where God may take me after Bible college. We had many families that wanted the, us to start a church, but then God opened our hearts to come to Greece. 
Yeah. I've shown the past of weeping for Greece and God touches. And we're here now almost 27 years. That's amazing. That's so funny that you said the, the missionary who was in your church showed some slides from South Africa. And that's kind of what developed a little bit of a passion for you all. My grandfather was a missionary to South Africa for over 30 years. He died over there about nine years or so ago. And when he died, every, his whole life's mission work in South Africa really is what gave me a passion for, for missions too. So I just think it's really cool that we have that kind of small but neat, integral connection. I think that's really neat. Wow, that's, wow, praise the Lord. Yeah. He is now in glory, yes. Yeah. Another question we had for you guys was, what does your typical week look like in Greece? Well, things have changed since COVID. Actually, we're very busy now because we're building a building and uh, we live about uh, 30 kilometers will be something like 27 miles outside the city of Athens, a city of five and a half million. So we're outside in a suburb by the mountain. So we have to get up very early to beat the traffic. So we get here about 7, 7.30 to observe the work because we don't have Christian workers building the building next door. So we need to be here. But actually now, uh, ministry-wise, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For Friday, early in the morning with my um, daughter and uh, uh, her family, the missionaries as well, and my wife, we prepare bags to give groceries to many refugees, which they are members of a church, but they cannot come. They're in camps right now. And uh, after we do that, uh, then we have Bible studies. And uh, sometimes people come and we lead them to Christ. Then Saturday, it's baptism class and we baptize him. Today we baptize two. And then there is, a, yeah, and one gets saved, praise the Lord. Yeah. Then it's a ladies uh, Bible study about 1.30. And uh, tonight will be choir. Then Sunday morning, it will be uh, an English preaching message with a translation into Greek. Then it will be worship, Greek, English, Greek, English, Greek, English songs. <laughs> then I will preach in Greek. Then we take a break. And then we have a Farsi church, Iranian church, which it's either will be me or my son-in-law. And it will be through translation and we'll be preaching to Iranians. Before COVID, we used to have church almost every day of the week. For now, we get two people get saved, one person gets saved, two people get baptized. We used to get 20 people saved, 30 people baptized. So the numbers have gone down. It's a lot of restrictions. So therefore, uh, we cannot bring, we bring few people at a time. Because the building we're in, we used to put about 220 people. But actually, it, I don't know what will be in square meters. It, is, uh, it will be... About 210 uh, square feet. Yeah. In each floor, literally, you got to put 20 people. I wow. used to put 70, 80 people. We used to pack them up like sardines. But now we <laughs> cannot do that anymore. Yeah. Because we have neighbors. People are very, um, I don't know, they're very fearful and rightfully so. So therefore, we're afraid with the neighbors of calling, getting the police, because they can lock us down if we bring more people than um, the space calls for. So we have uh, uh, on Sunday, um, 30 to 40 people in each service. Yeah. So we minister to about 100 people in three services and uh, where we used to minister to three, 400 people. Wow. We, it, it sounds like you've had to come overcome a lot of challenges from COVID. Now, are you... I love that you all are still able to be doing things over there. I know a lot of countries don't have that capability, but it's a huge blessing that you can all continue doing ministry things, even though COVID has caused a lot of chaos. We did a lot of Zoom. Yes. Zoom yeah, thank, God for, thank God for Zoom, which yes. is what we're using now. <laughs> that, that's we awesome. That, yes. That's awesome that you said you were going to preach um, in Greek. How long have you known the Greek language? Well, I was born 
in Sparta, Greece. <laughs> really? No way. <laughs> yes, I am a Spartan. So I was born in Greece, so I knew the Greek language. When uh, I moved uh, from Greece, we moved to Canada in Montreal, and then we came to U.S. when I was 13. But, but in my home, we always kept the Greek language, so therefore I maintained the language, yeah. and I was able to come back and not having to go to a language school, but yeah. directly uh, preach uh, right away. Yeah. Before I ask you another question I had, I just wanted to comment. I think it's great that you all are using uh, opportunity to connect with uh, the refugees. I know a lot of people in the States, my eyes were open to how many refugees were in Greece until a couple of years ago when I uh, looked into it. I think it's great that you're able to use that opportunity to uh, connect with them through the, uh, the, the bags that you all are talking about. And I know it's going to be eye-opening to a lot of people who don't necessarily think of Greece and think of how many refugees are over there. Um, I just wanted to say that's really great that you guys are able to have that opportunity to do that. Uh, Greece was, was the open door to Asia from all the restricted nations coming through Athens. Mm. Right now, we're getting less and less because the government switch, we have a very conservative government that has put blockades everywhere in the sea and inland, but we're still getting refugees come in. When refugees come to Greece, they are more open to the gospel in Greece than any other part in the Western world. Wow. Greece has been a friend to the Islamic nations. So therefore, they don't come with that aggressive uh, attitude. We are in... Um, uh, in a land where the enemy is, if you will, because many that come, even though they're seeking for help, they're very Islamic minded and they don't look for a change. However, here's the miracle in Greece. There are only few mosques that they are only storefronts where you go into Europe or into US, they have massive mosques that they are funded by the Saudis. So when refugees go into these areas, they go directly into a mosque where they get language, they get food, they get this, they get doctors, they get dentists, they get anything that, they want, that they're looking for. But in Greece, they don't. The mosques, they cannot help them. So they come to us. This is the amazing thing. They come in front of the door of the churches. Like what I have to evangelize to bring Greek people in, the refugees line up, not only in our church, in any church available. They line up by the hundreds. And they want to come in, can you help me? In the meantime, we give them food. They hear the gospel and they get saved. That's why Al Jazeera, which is, quote, unquote, the CNN in the Arabic world, has been giving warnings. Don't lose your faith over a plate of food. Mm, wow. That's incredible. I appreciate you taking just a couple minutes to explain that and unpack that for us. I think that's going to be something that I know I'm going to pray about you guys for, because that's something... Maybe we could, who knows what the future holds, but maybe maybe we could ha have a team or something from Parkway come over to help you guys out in the future. I think that'd be super fun. Parkway Baptist come to Greece. <laughs> we love to. We love to. <laughs> yeah, we have about two or three teams coming now in, I think, next week. Small in number, but for 15 months, it was nothing. Mm, yeah. Americans were not allowed to come yeah. in. But pretty to okay. COVID, we used to get groups from churches come almost every week. So wow. here's the deal that we used to offer. Uh -huh. that they will come and labor with us four days, passing food, getting to know people, see how we do ministries. And then for three, four days, we will do the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. Philippi, wow. his jail, the river where Lydia got baptized, Thessalonica, Berea, where they were searching the scriptures. Thermopylae for the Spartans beat the Persians. Yeah. <laughs> Athens, Mars Hill, it's only about a mile away from a church. Corinth, and that includes uh, the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. So it's exciting to be in a biblical place and pray and over the cities and, and open the Bible and also do ministry uh, as well. So it's exciting, something that you can pass on. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's... You, you think you would be excited about it, right? 
<laughs> well, you're talking about it. It's making me extra excited for it. I think we should do that. Put, put a Parkway team together and see what we can do to help you guys out over there and encourage you. Right, right. And the refugees love it. And we love it. And the people enjoy to be able to go see this biblical, yeah. wonderful sites. And also to see ministry live not just, you know, on a letter or uh, mm -hmm. on a Zoom, and uh, also to see somebody get saved, get baptized, yeah. so it's very exciting. Could you explain a little bit of the culture over there to us and maybe the people? And are the majority of the people receptive to the gospel, or is it a little bit of a, a barrier you have to break down with them? Right. When we read the Bible, when the Apostle Paul came to Greece, the most receptive people to the gospel on planet Earth were the Grecians. You read in Acts 16, Acts 17, it says multitudes of Grecians and even women received the Lord Jesus Christ. Athens, of course, he, he had difficulty because they were uh, too philosophical minded. So Greece, in the beginning of the New Testament, there were the most receptive people to the gospel. Today is totally the opposite. The cradle of civilization and the beginning of Christianity today has become a graveyard of missions. The fastest people coming to know Christ are Iranians. In Iran right now is more than six, seven million people versus nine years ago, it was only 100,000 believers. It is the fastest growing church on the planet. And the ones that you see getting saved are Iranians. So we have Iranians getting saved almost weekly and every day for Greeks get saved every three, four years. If you see one Greek get saved, you have a heaven sent Holy Spirit anointed revival. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Totally the opposite. Wow. That's and the thing is church and state has not separated like the rest of the European EU countries. Hmm. And they pay a penalty for that. What does that do? That means a priest or the Archbishop of Greece has authority. They're the only ones to be called church. We cannot be called the church. We are called the prayer house. Mm, okay. And right now we try to get a license to even be a prayer house where we can have a stand. So therefore, in the school system, they teach the Bible, praise God, Old Testament, New Testament, in all the schools, and the life of Christ. But then it culminates for the Orthodox Church is the authority, the real truth, and everything else is a cult. So in their minds, 98% of the Greek people believe that we have the truth and everybody else is wrong. It doesn't mean that they are very fanatical. Uh, sometimes they don't even bother go to church. But in their minds, it has, it has been stuck that they have the truth. So it makes it very difficult. They're very family-oriented. We have the strongest families in Greece than the rest of Europe and in the Americas. So an 18 year old man walks in and gets saved. He has to deal now. I don't know if you see the fat Greek wedding. He has to deal with the parents, grandparents, in-laws and everybody. And in the end, what happens? They draw him back. Because to survive in Greece and to live a good life like somebody lives in America, you need your family. Mm -hmm. You need the support, the financial support of grandparents. So it's that unit. So to break that barrier is very difficult. For the Iranians, on the other hand, that they can get the death penalty by returning back to the countries, they get saved left and right. Wow. More than 80% of the Iranians have seen some kind of a dream or a vision of Jesus Christ to tell them that he loves them. Hmm. I don't know. I don't see visions and dreams. And I know sometimes they're over-exaggerated in the U.S., but God is dealing in a wonderful way in these countries that they're secluded, and they're very open to the gospel. I love that. That's incredible. I love that the, the people and the culture, they're just open to the gospel and, and that you've been able to tell us a little bit about that. I wondered if you could tell us some advice, um, some advice to somebody who might consider, some advice to somebody who God is dealing with them to become a missionary through your own personal experience. And you've been on the field for quite some time now. Can you just give it in, some advice to somebody who they believe God's leading them to be a missionary? <laughs> My advice is to have good, clean ears to hear the call of God. I heard that when I was 37, so I came a little bit old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
another good advice is if you if you know where God has called you uh, and to get prepared properly. I did not know that I was coming to Greece. Thank God I knew the language till my last year in Bible college or other younger Bible students, they knew where they were going, they knew the call of God, they were learning instruments, they were learning the language, they were learning a lot of things, they were connecting, and they were getting better prepared. Nevertheless, I think preparation is important uh, to pray and to prepare for the people uh, and the country you're going to be going into, not to be a complete uh, culture shock, because many missionaries that have the call of God and they're going to a country they're not properly prepared. And within a year or two, they pack it up and go. So time is lost. Finances have been lost. And uh, and that's a problem. Yeah. A good preparation. Well, the, part of that preparation uh, from my uh, side of the story here is yeah. the family. Make mm. sure that you are in tune with the family. Mm. That uh, they have to be on the same page. They have to feel that calling with you or to accept the submission to follow the husband. We've seen many families, they come to Greece and they end up uh, quitting because especially if you go to a difficult country, the family needs to be in unity to stick together and you know to overcome the difficulties of the mission field. Very important. So, it sounds like uh, they need a really good support group, a support system. They can't do it alone. Yes. Um, I think that's great advice. And kind of connecting with that, what can the churches in America be doing to better help or better encourage you guys over there? And then in addition to that, I'd like to ask, what effect has the giving of Parkway Baptist Church had on you and your ministry? Well, the churches are the quote unquote, the lifeline for the mission work in prayer, in loving in encouraging, well, they don't write many letters anymore. Uh, well, that's out of it. I mean, we have <laughs> we have the iPhones. Uh, I think communication is good. Emails, Facebook. Communication <laughs> is good, um, and where um, we can encourage our church members. Let's say if I was a member in U.S. and I was a pastor there too, every so often that people would just text and say, "Hey, I'm thinking of you." Um, I'm pouring out a prayer on you. Have a blessed day. Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings. Yes, Zoom good. meetings are important because, for example, um, for your evening, your morning service is our night service, mm -hmm. but we can do Zoom with people here, uh, you know, singing or doing something mm -hmm. and, and say a few words. Uh, we have seen that it has worked, especially during missions conferences uh, where the missionary, let's say, you Zoom with me and uh, I have a bunch of people that have been saved and we say, thank you for giving to the Lord. You know, it's encouraging to the saints in the local church. Mm, yeah. And also the giving, uh, you know, God is using the local churches uh, to offer the offerings whereby there is sustenance uh, to the missionary. The offerings from Parkway Baptist has blessed us uh, for us to have a home, to be able to have a church, to be able to uh, have material to evangelize, tracks, newspapers, and uh, many things. Also, we have a radio station. It's um, uh, internet that reaches 2,000 Greeks wow. per week. Yes, and God has blessed us through your giving for me to travel and start a church in one of the most beautiful islands on the planet in Greece and literally a beautiful island. Uh, and, and now we're starting another church. It's a home church right now in Patra, the third largest city in Greece for the apostle Andrew, Peter's yeah. brother. He led Peter to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, he was crucified in an X-shaped cross and they still have the cross and some of the remnants. So because wow. of the giving, we have seen over 6,000 at stop at, you know, the number because of Muslims that have converted wow. into the Lord Jesus Christ. That's so you have helped us financially to help them 
to bless you because this is fruit to your account. Wow, that is incredible. Well, wow, that's amazing. Uh, one other question we had for you guys is how are you guys doing, you and your guys' family? And also, is there any specific prayer requests that we can pray for you guys? Well, uh, spiritual strength, because when you're on the mission field, you're facing more spiritual attacks. Mm -hmm. And that has been a testimony. I used to hear that when I was in Bible college from missionaries. And here you can experience it more. Why? Less Christianity. Actually, <laughs> there is only three Greek-speaking Baptist churches in the whole country. Wow. And we're about a, I'm talking about the Greek element. And all of us together were less than my choir in Cherry Street Baptist Church in Springfield, Missouri, less than 100. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we need spiritual strength to continue the good fight, to evangelize, uh, to expand the gospel more. Also, we need prayer for physical health. Um, our hearts are getting weary. You know, I'm getting old and I, I had a heart attack a couple of years ago. Still, uh, still <laughs> ready to go. Yes. Spartan. Uh, Spartan. <laughs> Spartan straight. So, yes. Yeah, so, so we need, uh, you know, physical uh, help. And also we need financial help for the new building that we're building. Why are we building that building if we have a building? The mm. building that we had, we used to pack it up and... Uh, we could not contain the crowds. Mm. Also, we need that building to get a church license, which will not be a church. It will be a prayer house, which means mm. the authorities have come in and harassed me. Why are you baptizing? Because I'm a Baptist minister. Only the Greek Orthodox Church can baptize. And I had the general of, uh, of Greece come to harass me and ask me for papers and all that. So we need a church license. And that's why we're building the building. And previous to COVID, we had all the money to finish it, finance it, and furnish it. Then wow. came COVID. Mm -hmm. And now everything was more expensive. So we're lacking funds and pray for that. Nothing is impossible with God. I right. truly believe that. He's miraculous. He's great and greatly to be praised. That's awesome. Can I ask you it, to be specific? How much more money do you need for the building to be built? So that way we can pray specifically. My wife don't tell me the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it fluctuates between 75,000 to 100,000. It depends on the uh, dollar uh, exchange. exchange. Okay. It depends yep. on the prices if they go up, like right now, the iron went up as we were building the foundation. Yep. So we, we give a 75 to 100,000 just to be in the money, as they say, you know? Yeah. Well, it sounds like your work, your work in ministry over there is growing and flourishing. So it sounds like you need it pretty desperately. So I know we as a church are going to pray specifically for that for you guys, especially over the course of this upcoming a uh, couple of weeks and upcoming month. Thank you. And always, um, um, whenever you want to connect with Zoom and yes. uh, or we can uh, always connect even live with the church and just say, yes. one word. you know, what we do sometimes, they call us and we can do a three minute uh, during worship, you know, three minute, you know, yeah. I am so and so. And because of your giving, here we are, you know, this is what's happening. Thank you. And blessings and stuff like we can always zoom on something live. And be an encouragement because you, as a church, have been a great encouragement to us. That's amazing. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I'm just super excited that you speak the language Greek. Could you say something to our church in Greek or maybe a Bible verse for us to hear? Σας αγαπώ με αγάπη Χριστού. Τόσο πολύ αγάπη στο Θεό, στον κόσμο, ώστε εδώ και τον Ιόντο το μόνο γενή. Ο παν πιστεύων εις Αυτόν να μην χαθεί, αλλά να έχει αιώνια ζωή. Μόνο ο Χριστός σώζει. I said we love you, and then I quoted John, John 3.16. I love it. That's so cool. Well, hopefully, maybe uh, we'll be memorizing that as a church or something. <laughs> or you can teach us, yes. teach us when we come down. Yes, please. Um, 
Uh, keep that in mind. It has been a great heartbeat of our ministry yes. uh, that where people come and they get so excited, you know, visiting, you know, the where Paul was in prison or where Lydia get baptized and then come live on hands serving the refugees and seeing people get it saved. It's very exciting. I'm excited. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we let you guys go, we just want to pray with you really quick um, and then let you guys go for the evening. Let's pray. Heavenly thank Father you. God, thank you for this opportunity to connect and get to know the Demacos family, Lord, a little bit more personally God, and intimately. We pray specifically for them, their spiritual strength, Lord, that you'd help them get through, Lord, whatever challenges come their way, uh, especially the challenge with the building that needs to be built. We pray that the funds would be raised up to $75,000 to $100,000. And we also pray, Lord, that the ins and outs of it with the paperwork and the, the government aspect of it, Lord, that you just make a way to get all of that taken care of for the prayer house. We pray that you just continue to bless them where they are, bless their family, uh, bless their children, their grandchildren, Father, bless the ministry over there in a mighty way. Help us as Parkway Baptist Church to continue to support them and encourage them. I pray, Lord, that we would even Lord, moving forward, do a better job of connecting with them and lifting them up in our prayers. Lord, and I pray that you would just allow your work in your kingdom's work to continue in the States and in Greece, Lord. And we pray that you put a special blessing and hedge of protection about uh, the Demacos family, uh, even this evening. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. What a blessing. Absolutely. We can't wait to talk with you again soon. We're just thinking that this is the start of something amazing. And if you yeah. come, I'll bring you to Sparta. <laughs> yes, please do. I'll have to lift some weights before then, though. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that way I can fit in. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Um, well, thank you so much. We look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too.